sir. Uh, well, I was looking for a sweater, actually. Uh, certainly, sir. Uh, Mr. Granger, are you free? I, I'm sorry, Captain Peacock. I, I'm in the middle of a bowler hat. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, is Mr. Humphreys free? Uh, yes, Mr. Granger. Mr. Humphreys. Are you free, Mr. Humphreys? I'm free, Mr. Lucas. Yeah, Mr. Humphreys is free, Mr. Granger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lucas, Captain Peacock. Uh, yes, Mr. Granger. Mr. Humphreys is free, Captain uh, Thank Peacock. you, Mr. Granger. And uh, Mr. Humphreys is free, so he'll attend to you, sir. Mr. Humphreys, forward. <laughs> are you being served, sir? Thank you, madam. The bill is inside, and if the doorman doesn't give you every satisfaction, please bring it back, because we're only here to be of service. Well, it had got to be half past nine, and I was all dressed up in fashion. <laughs> and he still hadn't arrived. He stood you up. Men don't stand me up, Miss Brahms. Oh, no. No, I expect his car had broken down. It did the last time we had a date. <laughs> oh, and he apologised most humbly when I bumped into him a week later. Oh, so you're all dressed up, nowhere to go. No, no, no. <coughs> Mrs Axelby and I went down to the pally. It was the over 25s night. Oh, did, you pick up, did you pick anybody up? We didn't go for that, Miss Brown. No, I mean, did anyone come up and ask you to dance? Oh, no, I don't encourage that sort of thing. Anyway, I didn't like the look of any of the men there. <coughs> So after we'd stood by the dance floor for about 20 minutes, sussing it out, you know, we went into the bar. Oh, you didn't get sloshed again? Certainly not. We just had a few gin and tonics. Only one of the tonics I had must have been banned. <laughs> <laughs> they are sometimes, you know. Mm. But anyway, I came over all dizzy. Mrs Axelby had to put me to bed. Horses! Horses! <laughs> Here we are, Mrs. Slocum. Twelve pairs of thirty denier tights, unlucky for some. Twelve padded bras. <laughs> Who's kidding who? <laughs> and finally, twenty-four pairs of novelty briefs known to such common persons as myself as naughty knickers. <laughs> what are you talking about, Mr. Mash? Here. Look at that. Oh, it's got writing on. Oh, what does it say, Miss Brown? If you can read this, you're too close. <laughs> How disgusting. It's true. What about them, then? Oh, well. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> and then there's these, these coming four models. Hello, Cheeky. <laughs> I love Elvis. <laughs> Your flies are undone. <laughs> and no parking. Did you ever see anything like it in your life? Well, my boyfriend bought me a pair of those once, but I wouldn't wear them. Oh, what did they say? In case of emergency, pull down. <laughs> that must be worth a five pound fine. <laughs> That'll be quite enough of that, thank you, Mr. Mash. Captain Peacock! Are you having trouble, Mrs. Slocum? I certainly am, Captain Peacock. Well, I can only give you a moment. I have to see Mr. Rumbold. I absolutely refuse to display these. Well, you're, you're not being asked to wear them, are you? Certainly not. I wouldn't put them on for a thousand pounds. How much would you take them off for, then? <laughs> Mr Mash, get back to your basement. Oh, I see. Workers not allowed to have a sense of humour, eh? Hey, hey, Gold. Yeah, I mean, it's marvellous. Anyway, mate, we have our laughs, don't you worry. <laughs> you want to see what they've written about you on the walls of our cars, <laughs> Now, see here, Captain Peacock. I refuse to have anything to do with these vulgar garments. They're not that bad. Progress has to march on, Mrs Slocum. <laughs> not wearing those, it doesn't. I have to remind you that you are all paid to sell the goods purchased by the buying department. And if I don't? No one is irreplaceable. <gasps> You're not going to stand for that, are you? I very nearly said something very cutting and rude, I can tell you. I bet. What are you going to do about it? I have a good mind to hand in my resignation. <gasps> Your resignation? Stop, not so loud. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's you, sir. Definitely you, don't you think so, Mr Lucas? Yes, it's definitely the customer. It seems, seems a little tight to me. <laughs> they are being worn tight this year, sir. <laughs> Particularly that one. I wanted it for golfing, you see. Ah, oh, would be very good, sir. Keep your arms stiff, you see. Why don't you try a swing, sir? Oh. You have a lovely movement there. <laughs> yes, well, I, I do have a very small handicap. Oh, do you? 
You could probably find a pair of tight trousers to go with it. <laughs> it, it, it grips me under the arms. Yes, well, there's a lot of tension in that Shetland wool, sir. Yes, it's the nervous sheep, you know. They live near a fire in there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Lucas. Why don't you try another swing, sir? Yes. Well, it's very good for driving. How is it for putting? It's pulling. Perhaps it's the way you're holding the club, sir. What you must remember, sir, is it will stretch after the first wash. I thought wool always shrank. No, no, that's a popular misconception, that, sir. I mean, you only have to think about it to see it couldn't possibly be true. Otherwise, every time it rained, the sheep would get smaller, wouldn't they? <laughs> no, I definitely need the next size. We haven't got the next size. We must have the next size. We've only got a 48. That's the next size. Next size, coming up, Mr. Lumpy. <laughs> Here we are, sir. How's that? <laughs> Where's he gone? Oh, me. There, sir. Hmm. Well, there's not much in it, really. Is there? <laughs> Don't you think it's a little long? Well, they are being worn long this year, sir. It'd be very good for your handicap. <laughs> what you must remember, though, is it will shrink after the first wash. I thought you said wool doesn't shrink. Ah, that's pure wool. You see, this is half wool and half extruded man-made fibre. The extruded bit shrinks in hot water. The man-made bit shrinks in cold water. <laughs> in fact, sir, there's no point in wearing it at all until you've washed it. <laughs> all right, all right. I I'll take it. Sail, Mr Lucas. Oh, it's a very dear thing, Mr Humphreys. Uh, let me help you out of the small ones. Sir. Oh, thank you. Yes, would you? <clears throat> Are you all right in there, sir? <laughs> I'm stuck! <laughs> Ooh, uh. <laughs> Mr Humphreys, would you mind holding the gentleman's rear while I pull from the front? <laughs> Pleasure, Mr Lupin. <laughs> it's like pulling a Christmas cracker, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder who's going to get the novelty. <laughs> I beg your pardon? It's gone! What's gone? My toupee! You've lost it! Oh! Oh, later. <laughs> are they attending to you, sir? They are looking for my very expensive, undetectable hairpiece. We're having a bit of trouble detecting it. Perhaps it's in the jumper. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Should we comb it now, sir, or after you've put it on? D give it to me. Oh, takes years off you. <laughs> is it, um, is it all right? Yes. Not quite as undetectable as it was. <laughs> what other colours did they have? <laughs> yes, I certainly made my point, Captain Peacock. I'm having nothing to do with those things, I said. Well, he must have told Rumbold, cos he's bringing him over. Oh, he wouldn't sneak, would he? Well, Rumbo's looking very ugly. Yes, well, look at the start he's got. <laughs> Mrs Slocum, Miss Brahms, one moment, please. Yes, Captain Peacock? Mrs Slocum, something quite shocking has come to my ears. I thought that happened when he was born. <laughs> I'm afraid I had to tell Mr Rumbold about your insubordinate attitude. There are some knickers that I will display, and some that I won't. And those I won't are staying in my drawers. <laughs> I see. And Miss Brahms backs me up in this, don't you, Miss Brahms? Yes, and Mrs Slocum feels so strongly about it, she's prepared to resign. Is this true, Mrs Slocum? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> what I meant was that uh, I shall have to consider it very carefully. Very well. But I haven't had time to consider it yet, have I? <laughs> and I do think that someone with my excellent sales record should be allowed some discretion as to the stuff I push. <laughs> I mean, don't you agree with me, Mr Granger? If you want my opinion, you've been nothing but trouble since you put foot on this floor. You two-faced old crab. <laughs> <laughs> I take it that you don't support Mrs Slocum, Mr Granger. If she wants to resign, let her. We can do with that space to expand our trousers. Mm. Our trousers have been rather restricted since the ladies arrived, haven't they? Mr. Oh, <laughs> bursting at the seams, Mr. Humphreys, yes. <laughs> that area has been devoted to our trousers for over 25 years. Yes, in those days, before the ladies arrived, it was known as bargain bags. Now they're here, it still is. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, in Mr. Granger's defence, that his sales have gone down since the ladies took over half the floor. Perhaps because he's a bit past it. Past it? 
fantastic! A glass of water for Mr. Grange. A glass of water coming up. Tell that woman I'm severing my connections. Should I cancel the glass of water, then? <laughs> you know, I really don't know why Mr. Grange is blowing off at me. I mean, it wasn't my idea to move into his trousers. Yes, he's being uncommonly rude. It was a great shock to Mr. Granger to suddenly find ladies in his trousers. <laughs> Wouldn't have been so bad if it had been sports equipment. I had no idea that Mrs. Slocum's underwear was causing so much friction. Neither did I. Anyway, I could easily get a top job somewhere else, you know. Harrods have been making some very interesting overtures. Oh, yeah. What for? The piano department? <laughs> I also have very good connections with Marshall and Snellgrove. And the beauty department at Swan and Edgar's have made me a very interesting offer. What was it? A free facelift? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm going. Mr. Granger, don't stop her. Oh, no. I, I was just going to ring for the lift. <laughs> you can't go without your hat and coat. I'm not going outside. I'm going up to see young Mr. Grace. I'm going to put my points before him personally. Good morning, Mr. Stokoe. Good morning, morning, Mr. Grace. Good morning, Mr. Grace. Good morning, Mr. Grace. May I say, Mr. Grace, that it does our hearts good to see you looking so flamboyant. Uh, thank you. Thank There's you. something I'd like to show you, Mr. Oh, Grace. Yes, yes. We don't want a scene here. Keep him talking. Uh, may I suggest uh, one of our uh, silk handkerchiefs for your top pocket? <laughs> 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 That's quite a good match. I think you'll agree. Yes, yes. What do you think of that, Mr. Grace? Oh, I prefer it. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you agree? Oh, yeah. Yes, of yes, course. Yes, Mr. Grace. I have an announcement to make. Uh, quiet for Mr. Grace. Yeah. You may all be surprised to know that I have been a widower now for 40 years. I did down see my day too much. <laughs> Le yet th there's somebody here in Grace Brothers who I've had my eye on for some time. Oh, I'm sure so that any lady who's attracted your attention must have great qualities, Mr. Grace. <laughs> she will indeed be a lucky lady, sir. Yeah, she'll have lots of lolly and all. Mm, and she won't have long to wait for it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to sum it up, the maximum of one thing and the minimum of the other. May we be permitted to know of the name, sir? Oh, no. No, I, I, I prefer to keep that secret until I've told her my intentions. Well, that shouldn't take long. Uh, but I shall reveal everything to you shortly. No, no we'll look forward to that, Mr. Grimm. <laughs> uh, will you give me your arm, Mr. Slocum? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a word with you in private. Um, how long have I known you now, Mrs. Slocum? Oh, since I was a junior here, Mr. Grace. Ah, yes, yes, a very long time. <laughs> yes, uh, well, we, uh, we can't discuss it here. Um, perhaps you would have tea with me in my office this afternoon at, say, uh, four o'clock. I want to talk about a ring. A ring? Yes, uh, well, uh, carry on, everybody. You've all done very well. <laughs> a ring? A ring. He's going to propose. If she marries him, she'll be in charge of the whole store. Yes, after that tis was this morning, it looks as though Mr. Grange is going to lose his trousers altogether. <laughs> Not to mention us, our jobs. She'll be the power behind the throne. I never like to think of people having power there. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Slocum, we all heard that. Does that mean you and him are going we to We get... don't wish to make any comment at the moment. Just get me a chair, Miss Brown. Yes, Mrs. Slocum. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm sorry about our, our little misunderstanding, Mrs. Slocum, but I, I was only doing my duty. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when I spoke to Mr. Rumbold, I did say that my sympathies lay with you. <laughs> but it was you who said we'd better put her in our place. No, sir, what I actually said was there should be a better place for us to put her in. <laughs> <laughs> no hard feelings, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> I have never seen so much crawling since the last time I was at the reptile house in the zoo. <laughs> That'll do, Miss Brahms. Just because Mrs. Slocum's going to marry the head of the firm, you're getting all smarmy. Have a sweet, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, my dear. I have to think of my figure for a little longer. <laughs> Mr. 
besides, I haven't actually said yes yet, you know. Uh, one has to weigh up the pros and cons. Well, he's very old. I mean, he's past it. Yes, I'm not sure whether that's a pro or a con. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's not all that old. I mean, he's only about 70. Well, he certainly doesn't look 70. No, he looks about 85. <laughs> besides, age has nothing to do with it. I wonder where he's going to take you for honeymoon. They have a lot of earthquakes in Japan. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Well, get into a nice hotel, get him in the bridal suite and wait for a tremor. <laughs> well, you've got till four o'clock to make up your mind. Do you think he's going to pop the question? And if he does, Mrs. Slocum, what's the answer going to be? I shall have to think about that very carefully. <laughs> if you have any bother, you must do. He loves me, he loves me not with your tea bags. <laughs> But my hair's an absolute sight. I wonder if I could get an appointment up in the Continental Beauty Salon with Madame Beryl. Of course, it would mean having an extra long lunch break. No, I'm sure that'll be quite in order. Uh, those decisions are mine, Captain Peacock. Take as long as you like, Mrs. Lurvie. <laughs> Don't worry about your lunch. I'll send you down a bit of fairy cake. Yes, you <laughs> You don't want your tongue to rumble, just as you're about to say, this is so sudden. <laughs> but what am I going to wear? I mean, I must look my best. The full facilities of my department are at your service, Mrs. Slocum. She's hardly like to get proposed to wearing a three-piece suit. I was referring to our superior fitting room with two-way mirror. I beg your pardon. You know, what Mr. Granger really meant was the mirror you can see back and front in at the same time. Mm -hmm. Comes in quite handy sometimes. <laughs> and I'm sure that Mr. Rumble would, would welcome your choosing any garment from the ladies' department. Uh, of course, I was about to say that. Oh, how kind. Of course, I would have to choose something suitable to the occasion. How about opportunity knocks? <laughs> Half past three, and Mrs. Slocum's still not back from lunch. She is a very dear person, you know, Stephen. I'm very fond of her. Oh, so, so am I. <laughs> uh, by the way, Ernest, um, has young Mr. Grace any living relations? Only old Mr. Grace. And of course, he doesn't get about very much. No. Well, in that case, she stands to cop the lot. Yes. Yeah. She is a very dear person. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me how the party went. Oh, the fancy dress party yeah. the other night. Oh, I can't speak about it. Oh, go on, force yourself. <laughs> I bet you had the best fancy dress costume there. Oh, well, it was a stroke of genius to go as the red shadow. <laughs> you know, I'd been wondering what to do with those curtains from the guest bedroom. I suppose you used a touch of the old cocoa to black up and stain the face? Certainly not. I used overnight tan. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't quite dark enough, so I stuck my head in the oven for five minutes on regular too. <laughs> I bet you felt like Lawrence of Arabia. I did. <laughs> and I took my slippers, my bedroom slippers, and I held them over the gas, and I pulled the toes out to a point and curled them up. They just like the real thing. Oh, brilliant. And if anyone else had gone as the Lawrence of Arabia, you could have said you were Ali Barber and you left your pots outside. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, I shall never know who went as what. What do you mean? Well, my minicab broke down, didn't it, and I had to walk. I couldn't remember the address, and I had no idea where the flat was, and I was knocking on doors at random. Oh, so there you were in your curled-up slippers with your best curtain material, feeling desperate. <laughs> Until two policemen threw their arms round me. You found the fancy dress party, then? No, but you try walking round Golders Green at midnight dressed as an Arab, knocking on doors. <laughs> I was escorted home in a police car for my own safety. Ah, oh, what an anticlimax! Well, not really. One of them stayed for sherry and showed me how his handcuffs worked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very nice, very Are you being served, sir? Huh? No, but uh, I would like to see some trousers. Certainly, sir. Uh, Mr. Granger, are you free? Uh, I, I'm afraid not, to Captain Peacock. Mr. Lucas, are you free? I'm free, Mr. Granger. Oh, good. Uh, this way. Thank you. Mr. Granger. Why did you... why did you say that you were not free? Because I'm waiting to tell Mrs. Slocum how nice her hair looks. How nice your hair looks, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> it's lacquered solid. 
I bumped into the commissioner, knocked the peak off his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I bet it was expensive. Oh, a mere trifle, dear. I signed the bill. Oh. Well, I've got out the dresses she wanted to try on. I'm afraid I shall have to leave you in charge, Miss Brahms. Maybe Miss Brahms will have to get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I shall certainly put in a good word for her. Oh, isn't that a common colour when you get it in the light? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's rather nice. Uh, Brown's very dignified, isn't it? Yes, and it doesn't show the gravy. <laughs> um, superior fitting room is over here, Mr Slocum. Your kindness to me will not go unnoticed, Mr Granger. <laughs> Your tie's crooked, Mr Humphreys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, this whole department's in need of redecoration. I can't abide Mackie Payne. <laughs> There's a naked man in there in his underpants. <laughs> That's nothing, Mrs. Slocum. You wait till the honeymoon. <laughs> I think I'll make use of my own facilities. Thank you. <laughs> Captain Peacock. Yes, Mr. Humphrey. You're a man of the world. In your wide experience in these matters, do you think they're going to make a go of it? Well, putting it bluntly, Mr. Humphreys, I'd say that neither of them is in a position to be very choosy. Oh, I can't think what's come over the old boy. Well, perhaps he doesn't want to die uh, uh, unprogenitated. <laughs> that would be a most unfortunate thing to happen. I mean, perhaps he wants to have somebody ready to take over, like, like Ava Perone when her junta collapsed. <laughs> that can be nasty, too. And if you ask me... I think she'll have her hands full. Really? <laughs> Are you free, Captain Peacock? Yes, indeed, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a trifle formal for afternoon tea, don't you think? I'm not going to wear it this afternoon, but I couldn't resist trying it on. It makes me feel all young and innocent. <coughs> A remarkable garment indeed. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, it's quarter to four. Time to put your afternoon frock on. <laughs> La da da dee. Oh, be still, my fluttering heart. That's wind from your fairy cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks as if she's made up her mind. In five minutes' time, she'll be up in Mr. Grace's office. I wouldn't mind being a fly on the wall up there. I can tell you exactly what you'd see. Tea for two, a silly old muffin and a tired old bit of crumpet. <laughs> come in, come in. Where are the rings you wanted to have a look at, Mr Grace? Ah, thank you, Miss Robinson. Uh, where's the tea? Just come in, Mr Grace. Come in, come in. I hope I'm not late. No, early. The tea's not arrived yet. Do sit down. You know Miss Robinson of the jewellery department. Her superior and I are old acquaintances. Oh, that'll be the tea. Come in, come in. Here you are. Nice pot of rosy lee, Mr Grace. And your usual muffin and crumpet. <laughs> Oh, they're nice rings, aren't they, eh? <laughs> yeah, pick a big one, darling. And uh, pick the honeymoon suite on the ground floor. <laughs> one flight of stairs, he won't be able to get his breath back until after breakfast. <laughs> get out. <laughs> I expect you wonder why I uh, asked you to come and have tea with me, Mrs uh, Slocum. Well, a girl does have an inkling, you know. A what? <laughs> An inkling. What's that? <coughs> well, it's what a girl has when there's something special in the air. Oh, you mean like hay fever, something like that? <laughs> Shall I pour? Yes, please do. I expect you think I'm an old fool getting married again at my time of life. On the contrary, Mr Grace. You're very young in spirit and you need someone to take you out of yourself. Well, I mean, you never go on holiday, do you? 
Oh, that's true. Of course, I do realise that it's very difficult for a man in your position. I mean, supposing you were to take your yacht into the Carabino, <laughs> you'd have all those young girls all over you just because you're rich. Would I? <laughs> and they're only after one thing, you know. Are they? <laughs> Whereas if you're married, to a wife who's devoted to you, you'll always have someone at your side and be protected from all that. Someone to help you through your troubles, help you through life's weary problems, cherishing each other when you're sick and all that sort of thing. <laughs> I, I'm very grateful to you, Mrs Slocum. You've uh, helped me make up my mind. I brought you here to choose a ring. Oh, Mr Grace! That big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's for Miss Robinson, you know, of the jewellery department. Uh, I've had my eye on her for some time. Uh, almost three months. Miss Robinson? But now you've spoken to me, you put me right off the idea of marriage. But that was the last thing I wanted to do, Mr Grace. Well, it's very kind of you, Mrs Slocum, and you must help me again sometime. Oh, it's always a pleasure. When you come to my time of life, you need the help of an older woman. <laughs> Any time. Feel free. Uh, you haven't drunk your tea. I don't think I fancy it now. <laughs> well, uh, take a muffin in case you feel like it later. You're too kind. Uh, well, uh, but is there anything else? I don't suppose there is. <laughs> oh, um, Mrs Slocum. Yes, Mr Grace. Ask uh, the newsstand to send me up the uh, yachting news, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Run. It's past closing time. You may go if you wish. None of us are going till we've found out what's happened. Maybe he had the vicar upstairs in his office. A friend of mine did that once, you know. He had a small section of the choir hidden behind the curtains. <laughs> that was very moving. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> Doesn't she look radiant? <laughs> well, uh, tell us everything that happened. Uh, well, before I do, there are one or two things that I'd like to get quite clear. Mr. Granger, I take it that you no longer object to my presence in the ladies' department on this floor? On the contrary, Mrs. Slocum. The ladies' department will always be welcome. And I take it, Captain Peacock, that you will not in future insist upon the ladies' department displaying garments which they consider to be in bad taste. All goods on display will be entirely at the discretion of uh, whoever is in charge. <laughs> Good. Well, that's settled then. So, uh, when's the happy day? Today. Today? I turned him down. <laughs> <laughs>